Hey everyone, welcome to the show, Your Health in Your Hands. I'm Dr. David Ajibadi with the Brain and Body Foundation. Now, if you remember, last week we had the dynamic duo of Tifal and Chi talking about health. Health coaches, one is a doctor, the other is a health expert, all, kind, you know, all kinds of stuff that they're talk, talking to us about when it comes to health. But really folks, health is not that complicated. There's some basic things. If you get right, you will be able to see significant changes. And it's not just about you, it's about your family as well, your kids, your parents. These are things that you want to take back and use to educate your loved ones so that they don't keep on making the mistakes that they are making all the time. And we talk about these things a lot. And if you remember, we talked about brushing your teeth, sleeping well, having good sleep hygiene. These are all factors that people tend to overlook and in the end, tend to cost them. So mm -hmm. uh, health is about what you do. And I really want to emphasize that. It's about what you do. It's not how you look. It's not how you feel. It's about what you do. And one of the things you want to make sure that you're doing is that you're staying abreast of your numbers. And that's what Tifal and Chi are going to be talking to us again about. We're going to get into the details this time. So yes. Tifal and Chi, how are you all doing? Great. Good. Good welcome. Thank you for having us yeah. back. Nice you back. Fantastic. Fantastic. I Thank love you. the pink. I don't know. Uh, Thank I'm you. Black <laughs> like looks good, but the fab, well, this is yeah. so much. Yes. Yeah. Am, yes. I going to get, am I going to get one of this? I mean, I, this is. Of, of course. Like, yeah. Of course. Of course. Yeah. This is, you oh, know, I, how I, fab. So we, oh, you know, um, we talked about, you know, how fab are those yeah. five and the importance yeah, right. of knowing your numbers. And, um, yeah. you know, a lot of times we know a lot of things, right? We hopefully, you know, know our credit score, we know our numbers, people talk about different things, but we want to make talking about your health and knowing those numbers uh, a thing. Like how fab are your five? And not knowing that number is not a good thing, right? Oh. Ignorance is not bliss when it comes to your health, right? I want you to know better, you do better. So I like how you started your segment talking about, it's not just about the person. And when we talk about that uh, platform, we talk about it being very personal, but being practical. So we talk about practical ways where people can make changes in their life. It's very intentional and it is generational changing. We yeah. strongly believe that. Yeah. That if you learn how to eat a certain way and, and incorporate activity into your life, you teach that to your children. You do that with your parents, your siblings, the ones you care about. And so when people say, oh, this runs in my family, we always have diabetes. Everybody might have has high cholesterol. The question is, you know, how are they eating? And what has been passed down from generation as norm? And one person can change that trajectory. So I love how you frame that as you open mm -hmm. up the segment. Yeah. yeah that's perfect. And, Thank, um, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's all about, it's all about what people do. Yeah. So I don't want to take a single more minute away from what you have to do because I really want us to go into this. And I'm going to be on you. I'm going to be asking questions because I want to be clear. I want to make sure that Yasikira or Yamodi, you know, yes. who's in the, in the remote areas, understands what we're talking about so that at least she can apply sure. some of these things. So how do we start? Yeah. So we're going to start with the five five. Yeah, sure. So, you know, we're talking about, you know, you just mentioned people in the remote places. So no matter where you are, Think about how we grew up. I grew up in, in Ibadan, right? Mm -hmm. My parents cooked every day. My mom did shopping. My dad did shopping. Whoever shopped, you know, because children don't have access to the funds to do grocery shopping, right? right. So it starts somewhere. That's the Fab Five. Getting your Fab Five to the right starts at the very, very beginning of childhood. Whoever begins that process, dictate how things go down the line. Because we know that children, by the time they're five years old, they've already formed all the cells they're gonna have for the rest of their lives, right? So all, everything else we do prior to that period is building upon those cells. This, this, you know, defining whether they're gonna be this way or whether they're gonna be this way or why they're gonna be shaped going forward. Mm -hmm. So making those good choices right mm -hmm. from the very beginning, making healthy choices right from the very beginning is so generational change. And that is why my wife said it's generational change. Mm -hmm. Because if you can teach your children, if I teach my children in Ibadan, in Lagos, 
in Enugu in Canada, wherever you might be in the country, how to eat, there is a good probability that they would teach their own children as well mm -hmm. how to eat and how to exercise. Mm -hmm. We sat on the trees when we were young mm -hmm. in, uh, on the UI campus. But we still on the tree. My, we had a guava tree. My wife. <laughs> we had, all kinds, we had all kinds of trees. Just eat fruit. Just eat and, fruit. And, yes, and fruit. bike and play soccer, soccer till you were sweating up a storm. And sometimes, you know, with globalization and yeah. stuff, Kids now stay indoors, they're on their games, you know, so making physical activity the thing to do, making eating yeah. healthy fruits and vegetables the thing to do. Yeah. And I know that, you know, one of the things we also want to do is, you know, we talked about those five. And again, yeah. if somebody didn't watch the show last week, you know, we talked about blood pressure, cholesterol, blood sugar, your yeah. body mass index and your waist circumference, right? Four of those five are very easy to get. You know, two of yeah. those three, you don't even have to have seen anyone, your waist and your, your BMI. But we also want to say that, you know, it's important to know the other numbers, your blood pressure, blood right. glucose, because you could have high blood pressure, or hypertension, right? What people call it, or sugar, or diabetes, or, or sugar, sugar problem, whatever people call it. Mm. Um, and not know until people, so many people have come into the hospital with a diabetic coma for the first time before they even knew they had high sugar. So it's really important to think about getting those numbers and checking and knowing what the normal should be. But also knowing that uh, one of the things we find is th there's a disconnect between these conditions and what they cause, right? People don't necessarily put the, they're like, oh, this person was fine and had a stroke. Or this person was at work and just had a headache and, and, you know, couldn't talk anymore. Or this person had renal failure. They're like, oh, kidney failure. But walking back to the fact that they had uncontrolled high blood pressure, or controlled diabetes. So to be able to have people understand, like you said, why, what that, those medical conditions are, what the impacts are on your organs over time. And in addition to whatever it is your doctor or nurse or, or healthcare provider prescribes, what, is, what are the other factors that affect that? We know that nutrition affects your blood pressure. It affects your blood sugar. It affects your cholesterol, all of these things, right? So it's that connection between what the condition is, yeah. knowing about it, but if you have it, how do you manage it? And if you don't have it, what do you need to do to prevent it? And those are kind of the five. And um, I think you had said why, yeah, why the five is because if you, if you can get blood pressure, diabetes, and cholesterol under control, that affects a lot of the top conditions that yeah. adults ill with. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like for instance, now, I mean, I mean, mentioning kidney diseases, I mean, what people don't, most people don't realize is that hypertension and high blood sugar are the two most common causes of kidney failure. Yeah, of, yeah. Right? It's a need, right. need, for, need for dialysis. And I mean, dialysis centers are, exploding all over Nigeria because people are just coming down with kidney failure it's just simply because they were careless or negligent about their blood, their hypertension, their blood pressure, and their blood sugar. And that needs to stop. We need to be able to, uh, that's why I love what you guys are doing. And I hope you get more involved in the Nigerian situation so that we can help to educate. It's, you, you cannot under, uh, overemphasize the importance of this thing. It's, it's, it's rampant, especially people. I mean, again, with the whole spirituality thing, the whole thing in that, oh, that's uh, it's not my, my it's not my approach. It's, this is not my under my control. It's under God's control. Somebody else's control. These are these are things. One of, one of the things that we have to educate out of people. So I really want to encourage. We are. We absolutely do, sure. and that it's not inevitable, right? People just think, well, once you have this, it's going to happen, and it's not just in Nigeria. You brought that up, but even in the U.S. Dialysis centers are exploding because really? Medicare covered. Yes. And a lot of it has to do with kind of going back to the basics, to the prevention, right? And you yeah. know, we talk about primary prevention, which is to prevent something from happening. But even yeah. secondary prevention, when somebody already has high blood pressure, like, you know, we're going to meet people who already have high blood pressure. Some of the people we work with already have this condition, mm -hmm. but you can prevent the progression of it. It doesn't mean because you have diabetes, you're going to go blind have your legs cut off and go on dialysis, right? We see that at the other end, but there are things you can do. So it's really about, you know, talking to people and helping them prevent these chronic conditions. But when they do have them, to prevent complications of these things, right? right. High, and, yeah. And, and you know, what, what I just wanted to also share was that 
we want people to understand that it's, it's actually a very easy process to prevent you know, it's actually a very easy process. And like, again, it's also because many people don't have access. Yeah. Because sometimes yeah. we talk and people are like, well, I don't have access. If I, you know, I'm, I'm suffering from this disease or whatever, or I don't have this or I don't have that. But there are simple things mm. we are trying to teach that can actually make a huge difference. How much water are you drinking at home? How much movement are you getting every yeah. day? Are you moving? Are you getting right. up? Are you outside? Are you just playing games at home? Yeah. Are we, what are we teaching lifestyle wise? 90% of yeah. people who have type 2 diabetes is lifestyle. 90%. 90% is lifestyle. Wow, I didn't you know that So if we yeah. can do that, and not only that, here in the US, oh, about 80, 80 to 90 cents of every dollar in the US here is attributed to lifestyle disease management. Hmm. Every, it, that's 90 cents of every dollar they spent. Mm -hmm. yeah. 90 cents of every. So you can you can see how much lifestyle, just changing lifestyle, mm -hmm. eat better. And when we talk about fab five, we're not just talking about eating and exercise, but also mental health. Right. We're also talking about sleep, right. Right. Stress, stress management, how stress mm -hmm. impacts your body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. So all these things are all connected. Mm -hmm. So we look at you. And when I met exactly. you, the human being, as a 360-degree fashion, yeah. that's the way our platform looks at health and wellness. It's 360 degrees. So we have health, nutrition, mental health, sleep, all that, exercise, mm -hmm. all that focus on one platform. All connected. All yeah. connected. Fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Okay, so we're going to take a short break now. And then when we come back, I want to ask you a tough question. Okay. Sure, we love tough questions. That's yeah. a really tough question. So, <laughs> okay. not, you can handle it, I'm sure. You folks, do sure. go. We'll be right back. <laughs> All okay. right. All right. Welcome back. All right. Now, this is this question really is about what I refer to as the tyranny of the genes. Now, think about me. My dad is short and stocky. <laughs> Yours truly is short and stocky. And as a matter of fact, this last month I've been here, I've been, I've been gained even more weight. I probably gained like 15 pounds. And part of it, my excuse is the winter and all that. But people look at me and they say, you look like your dad. You talk like, even say you talk like your dad. You even walk like your dad. And somebody saw, saw me do a presentation one day. And it's funny, Tifa, it's funny. <laughs> Both my parents, I mean, <laughs> my, they watched me. My f father's sister watches the watches at a different time and then my mother's sister watches the same show and yeah. they both at the same time said like this. you're presenting like your dad oh wow <laughs> and, and i'm like i've i never tried to <laughs> anyway yeah. i went to i was i was sent to military school when i was 10 so i didn't really have much to copy right but it's like in the genes and i'm yeah. speaking about that i look at you tifa i know your mom your mom is one of the my favorite people in all the earth <laughs> <laughs> and I know that we're working together on the sickle cell project. I knew her 25 years ago. She hasn't changed much, except for a few wrinkles here and there, but she hasn't gained any weight. And those are your sisters. So my question is, when people see you and they say, well, it's easy for her to say that. How about if for ladies who have grown up, they've always been obese, how are they going to, when they weigh, measure their waist, how, is it that easy for them to lose weight? I mean, you, can we get some realistic uh, yes. attention? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for asking, asking that question. So you talk about the influence of genetics and how important that is and how easy it is to lose weight, especially once you're getting to middle age and there's a hormonal stuff of menopause and a lot of things, right? So you are absolutely correct. Nobody says it's easy. But when you want to get to where you've never been, you're going to have to do some things you've never done. And that's, that's just part of life, right? And so one of the things that we talk about in our mission is to empower people to be the best version of themselves, not to be anybody else, right? To be the best and healthiest version of yourself, right? And so one of the ways we go with that is having people discover their why. Why is it that I want to be healthier? Because until you get there, there's going to be, always be a disconnect. So yeah, sometimes you have people where they say, oh, my mom, my grandmother, everybody in my family is a certain weight. Everybody is, um, has uh, medical conditions. 
But if we know the import of lifestyle, and as T talked about how the cells are laid, even our fat cells are laid very early, is that mm -hmm. when we, when the fat cells are laid very early, so you're actually building more fat cells, your foundation of fat cells is larger. So it may not show when you're a kid, but as you get older, as you start to, those cells expand, you just have more cells. So not just do you have a hyperplasia of cells, you also have hypertrophy, which happens with aging. So you just have more, which is why it's important. Even though the kids may not show any of these weight changes, some kids do, some don't until they're getting to be middle, you know, teenagers or later. The other thing we also know is that some of that is generational. How people have always eaten, and how people have approached exercise generational. So you say how much of it is genes, how much of it is that everybody has done the same thing a certain way. But when you get to a point to understand that there's more beyond the cosmetics, it's not about fitting into something. It's like knowing that that waist circumference that's over 35 in a woman, over 40 in a man, is associated with heart disease, stroke, and early death. Then you say, what do I need to do? And that's a commitment to, your, to a change in your lifestyle, in how you eat, how you physically exert yourself, and how you really take on that challenge. Not to look like somebody else, but to be, is this really the healthiest version of yourself? Sometimes you need to see the doctor. They're like, oh, maybe it's, women have more thyroid issues, right? In midlife, check your thyroid, check, check your hormones. Are you going through menopause? And then really take an honest look about are you doing the best with what you're eating and the carbohydrates and how you're metabolizing, me metabolizing things? And how are you exerting yourself? There's something about women, sometimes we get to a certain age, we kind of take it easy, right? Yeah. We go to yeah. parties. You do, and when we talk about exercise, it's not about going to the gym. It's about exerting yourself. Are you walking fast? Are you doing things? Are you dancing? You know, a lot of us, we like, we get to a certain, when you spend so much time putting the face together and the hair, you don't want to sweat it out. But yes. you've got to say what's more important. They had a campaign here in the U.S. talking to black women in the U.S. about hair or your life. They actually yeah. had to do that. Like if your hair, your edges are good because you don't want to sweat. But if you're getting heart disease 10 years younger than your white colleague, is it worth it? So figure right. out a protective hair for yourself. Also, you know, um, when you go to parties late at night, we do a lot of parties. We, you know, parties, oh, and things like that making the right choice, not eating carbs late at night, and also getting up to dance. If you're 50, 60, 70, 80, get up and dance, sweat. Don't just sit and be and cold. We need to exert ourselves. We need to eat differently. And we need to use ourselves as our competition, as long as you're going the right direction, not to look like somebody else. And it's not easy until you've committed to it. So the long answer to your question is, yes, it can be done. Lifestyle matters. It may be different. Everybody's trajectory is different. Everybody's built different. And if any program says, I promise you're going to look like this person, just say no. You need to look like the best version of yourself. And, you know, talking about guys, you asked me about girls. What about men in terms of? Well, the simple a lot of things uh, my wife talked about, everything applies across the board as well for men as well. So um, my wife talked about exerting yourself. There are only two ways that actually you actually lose weight. Only two ways. You exhale carbon dioxide from your mouth and you excrete fluids from your skin. If you don't exert yourself, those two things will never happen. They can't. They happen when you go to a party to dance. They happen when you're dancing with your family at home. They happen when you're outside taking a walk. You always have to exert yourself. And sometimes you find out if you have problems with your heart, your heart if you exert yourself when you can't, you know, you, you, you're out of breath, breath yeah. so quickly. So that's why oftentimes stress tests are done for people who are having heart issues. Mm -hmm. So for men, you're going to think about it. You're going out to have a party or to, to party with people. The time you eat, a lot of times, not even just about what you eat, but even the time you eat. You can't go to a party at night and eat at 12 midnight or 11 o'clock at night. Finish your party and go to bed at night mm -hmm. because the food has not metabolized. So you're just... Storing. storing tons and tons of high glycemic index foods in your system that ultimately becomes fat, fat. Yeah. because you can't burn it while you're sleeping. Nobody yeah. moves around and dances while they're sleeping, right? Yeah. So these are the kind of things. So, and especially, um, and when you're not sleeping well, your body will also you know, you know, secrete cortisol, stress levels, which builds up around your okay. midsection. So there are a lot of things that will happen when we don't 
exercise, when we don't do eat well, when we don't eat at the right time, mm -hmm. it becomes so complicated in the way this can impact our body. So we so, just talk to people. Go ahead, Dr. Ajibati. Quick, quick, quick one, though. For those sure. who, for some reason or the other, cannot do what you just said, exercise. Uh, bad knee, bad hip. Sure. More, what happens then? Sure. Yes. So you're right. There are people because of, you know, because of surgeries or certain things or age or arthritis or something that cannot do those, can't be as physically active. Mm -hmm. But this is where we come in. This, this is the kind of thing we teach people. And, and things like simple, customizing, just customizing yeah. it to who you are. We meet everybody where they are. So okay. we don't expect, like my wife talked about, everyone is different, right? Mm -hmm. we, we don't expect anybody to be like the next person. We just want you to be the best version. And being that best version could be somebody who's starting off being arthritic. Could be somebody who's starting off being overweight. Could be somebody who's starting off being skinny, mm -hmm. but, but not eating well. But cholesterol is too But cholesterol good. is too high. So mm -hmm. you may still be lean, but have you know, arteries that are all blocked up and mm -hmm. clogged with cholesterol. Yeah. Okay, so, so there's, a, there's, there's a solution. Are. So there's a solution no matter what. It just needs no matter to what. That's, I, well, Correct. Doing. And that's where our personal platform comes. When we yeah. meet with our coaching clients right. is we talk about your why. You need to know why you want yeah. to do this. We talk about where you are, yeah. medical problems you may or may not have, limitations, and then customize things. And we talk about tough love. Tough love for yourself to say, I want to do this and I'm doing this for somebody, you know. And, you know, when my husband was talking about, you know, tough love and when people eat, it used to be I mean, people would feed their partners or spouses a big mound of carbs and were like it was so good he fell asleep right after he ate that, yeah that is a bad thing if your partner don't, eats, don't, don't say anything bad about you can talk about something else maybe about something portion else. Por we, portion because, size because we, teach, we, 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 we teach we teach portion size here. we eat we we right? all of that that's why it's about portion, portion size, size. What you eat I, and when you I agree. Eat. Yeah, so let's let's talk about that in the last few minutes. We want to talk about okay. food, especially from the African yes. perspective. Yes. We have a few more minutes, but I really want, want don't want this to end without us talking about that. So tell us about sure. let's talk about food. Sure. So did you want did you want to continue that now, right? Yes, so yes, yes. One thing I wanted to show you talk about food, right? So um Dr. Ajibale, I'm sure you've learned you know about the the blue zones around the world. There are places called blue zones around the world where people live to 100 years old and they're still active, they're moving, and they have good psychosocial support around them. One thing about these people, one very common theme they run across these people, and they live it's in Sardinia, in Italy, in Greece, in Chile, in, there's a place in um, California. It, it, it actually went to grad school. Loma Linda. Loma Linda, that's correct. That's where I went to grad school. So, these people are, they start looking at what, what, is, what is common with them. They make healthy eating the easy choice. So, and bad eating became an option, right? So you want to make the healthy eating an easy choice. It comes to you, boom, quickly. So let's talk about specifics now. We, we, wanted, we want to talk about specifics. So yes, we mentioned uh, reduce your portion size because we are mm -hmm. very, very into starchy foods. But okay, yeah. reduce your portion size and starchy foods. What else? should focus, um, African Nigerians focus on to eat? What? Lots of, lots of fruit, okay. vegetables, and protein. So when you, when you eat a lot more protein and, and fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. first of all, a lot of things are missing that diet is fiber. Fiber is great, it helps remove cholesterol, it helps the digestive system go a lot of water. Water, water, especially with how much sweat, with the heat and stuff in Nigeria. So replenishing with water when you're not dehydrated, it blunts your hunger. You say you're not craving sweets and things like that. Avoiding processed and packaged food because that has gone up and reducing your portion size of carbohydrates. So, you know, we talk about rice and inyo and all of those things. They're heavy starchy foods. But again, in, in your larger plate, if that is the minority, like, right, a scoop, as opposed to a mound and then a little bit of protein on the top, using beans and legumes yeah. and other things, um, sweet potatoes instead of yam or cassava, tons of fiber. And honey, you, you make a point because we're going to wrap up in a minute, but one thing I just wanted to bring up is that Nigeria is rich in this Nigeria yes. is rich what? in legumes. Nigeria is rich in legumes. Legumes, okay. Nuts, legumes, vegetables, 
um, beans, you know, effort, all kinds of beans. Eat as much effort as you can. Those things, do, I mean, that's what we eat when we're back home, right? So just the things you eat, the effort, the legumes, the nuts, the granite, effort, you find granite everywhere. The nuts help skin. They help they you know, healthy with, fats with your omega, right? your omega-3s, the healthy fats and things like that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's very, we are rich. We're, we're rich in Nigeria with this set. This kind of food. Mm -hmm. Just trying to make sure we're making the right choices. Mm -hmm. You know, the 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 union and the rice in the person, the island, and the vegetables surrounding it. I, I don't know why I keep, I don't know why I keep on talking about union. Please, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm I'm an to go to, but it's Smart. all about what you. It's all the other yeah. surrounding stuff, and really just looking at that portion because the, again, the high carb sugar that comes with that gets stored as fat. So unless you're yeah. a marathon. It so we need to converted. talk about we need, we need to see that we need to really emphasize that and, and I'm, I'm I'm kind of yes converted that. yeah yeah because things like eba in your amala maybe not so much but amala is better yes amala, amala is better. better but the thing about those things folks is that once you take them in they are quickly digested and quickly converted to sugar and therefore raise your blood sugar and therefore can as you know you, you know how things go from then on from then on so oh. you want to avoid foods that will quickly convert to sugar. And raise your blood sugar and cause damage to your bodies. Yeah, so like you were talking about the glycemic yeah, index, glycemic that index. high glycemic index, yeah. huge burst, huge insulin, yeah. your blood sugar drops, you're hungry again, it's like that. The things that keep your blood sugar level, slow release, those are the things you want to do that are going and to I affect like, your outcomes. I like the fact that you mentioned sweet potato too, because I think that's a, that's a secret weapon as far as I'm concerned. When I started taking sweet potato, because of the high fiber content, and it yeah. has a few other things too that I, that are I I I'm convinced is better than than of course better than yam and better than um, the regular kind of Irish potato because of the fiber content. Correct. And the things that it has. I remember times when I'm eating it at night and in the morning I'd feel great. It's like it's the fiber felt my felt fed my microbiome my my, my good bacteria. And you wake oh. up well, you say got microbiome, he gets so excited. <laughs> oh yeah. There is, everybody think about this, right? You talk about yeah. fiber. Because a lot of yeah. times I like people to understand, or we like people to understand the very simplistic look then. If you think about the pipe, think about your arteries, right? right. You take a sponge, any sponge, and you push it through a small pipe all the way through, it's more likely to clean that pipe out. If you right. keep pushing a sponge through a pipe, all the rust, everything comes out. Yeah. The same thing fiber does in your arteries. Yeah. It helps to pick up yeah. all that pipe. Good. Just just like that. So I just we like yeah. to just understand at a very basic level mm -hmm. how this can impact your body. Sorry, and your digestive system. Yeah. The fiber is pushing stuff through and pulling yeah. water with it, yeah. and yeah. so a lot of the issues around constipation and yeah. things like that that affect your health and and how much what you put in. You know, as diverse as they are, and as close to nature that they are, they engage with your bacteria more. Your bacteria proliferate. They feel like they have work to do. Processed foods, we're not talking about, but that's higher than it was 20 years ago, 10 years ago. And it's a disease of affluence. People can now afford packaged things and they, we're treating our children. But those are things that yes. our bodies are not, our bodies were not nature, our bacteria are not processed to uh, digest those things. They're toxic, they're foreign, and they just stay there and, and cause inflammation within the tract. So the more natural things, the more work our bacteria have to do. The better. What do you say about if it gets stuck in your teeth is a good thing. If it gets stuck in your <laughs> teeth is a good thing. If it flows without getting, you know, hard, it's a good thing. Animal fat will, you know, crystallize in a bottle and harden. If if you pour animal, if after you make your steak or make your pork, whatever it is, and the grease from it, if you leave it in a bottle and pour vegetable oil in a bowl, come back next day, come back two days. If you turn those two bottles upside down, the animal fat will stay where it is. That's mm -hmm. what it does in our arteries. Mm -hmm. We can't do, yeah. So yes. if we want things that flow, things yeah. that flow. Because when it helps, flows, yeah. water flows, vegetable Olive oil, oil flows. Things, yeah. Granite, Over, granite oil flows. Better than palm oil. Better you know. So oil. again, so it's really just yeah. making those substitutions and saying, you know, and being able to do the analogy. So I like the analogy about if you're going to eat those rice or you know, and all that stuff, think of yourself on, on an island. You're that tiny person on a big island, everything else is veggies and protein. The you, the carb is little. Think about the analogy of the fiber going through and cleaning through the oil pouring out. These are things that people can tangible. When we talk about your pressure is high, 
that again, after a while, your body keeps going and going and going and your heart failure. When you say, oh, I, had, I just had heart failure. Well, he had blood pressure that was years and years untreated. Yeah. When they have, you know, if you think about uh, blocked vessels, when somebody has a stroke, it's because these vessels are blocked and if fat is in your liver, that's why the waist circumference, if you can, you know, one thing that is a bad sign for everything is that waist circumference. Because mm -hmm. if there can be fat in the liver, as big as it is an organ, think about fat within your blood vessels to your brain. And most people with fatty liver die of cardiovascular disease before they get liver problems. You know, the liver has a huge reserve, right? Yeah, so right. fatty yeah. liver is a predictor of, of stroke and heart disease. Yeah. So it's really just help, helping to make the connection and saying, like you said, we have those fruits, we have the vegetables, we have the good weather, you don't have to worry about snowstorms. Yep. So as long as you're in a safe place where you can exert yourself, sweating is a good thing. Yes. And you, you have to be okay with that. And then just, you know, making choices about what you eat. Yeah. All right. That's fantastic. So we have just one slightly over a minute left. Tifa, Tifa, you said uh, 35 inches for women. What is, it, what is it for men? Anything over 40 for men or 35 for women is part of the risk for metabolic syndrome. Obviously, the lower it is, the, the better. Is better. That's so the cut off. That. You don't want to get there. But that is in terms of defining yeah. metabolic syndrome, right? so the high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high glucose, a BMI over 30 is obesity. And everybody just putting BMI on Google, height, weight, it tells you. Anything over 25 is overweight, over 30 is obese, and then uh, a waist circumference over 35 and over 40 are the cutoffs where your risk really goes up, where you want it, obviously, the lower, the better. Okay, okay, fantastic. And then, of course, well, you, did, you didn't emphasize this, but alcohol, you want to watch your ah. alcohol intake? Yeah. Hey, alcohol intake, the very, you know, you've got to watch that, because think about it, what, what, is, what is alcohol made of? Sugar. Either sugar, sugar. Or yeast, it's right? sugar. Sugar and yeast, <laughs> beers and all that, right? Yeah. So what happens? Yeast rises, right? And sugar damages your joints. Soda is literally junk food. That's the other thing we don't talk about. Soda, don't yeah. talk about. soda yeah. would deplete your bone density, go to, get into your joints and deplete the bone density and give you diabetes quickly down the yeah. line. Yeah, that's why so, diabetes is going on. Yeah, so we tell people wherever they are, here in the U.S., in Nigeria, wherever you are, cut out the soda. Cut out zero. the soda. Zero. That's the other. Oh yeah, the sh yeah, zero soda. zero soda. Zero. And people will tell you just by cutting out soda. Wait, soda gone. Yeah. Orange. If you want orange juice, get an orange and suck on an orange. Yeah. That stuff in the just juice and all that parties. Sugar. They put it on every table. That is pure sugar yeah. directly, and it goes directly converted to fat. Stays there. Are you and, hungry and, again? And no, no diet soda either, right? Because that's no a, nothing. Because no all that carbonated stuff yeah. is is harmful. No diet soda. Um, um, you know, studies show that actually the all the all the um, aspartams and all mm -hmm. those things that are put because if you look, it, it says O S E at the end. Anything that has it says sugar free, but it has something that says sucrose or lactose. It's sugar. And, I, and I've been told that even even, even the, the substitutes are probably even worse in terms of the metabolic yes, effect, yeah, with the toxic yeah. effect on the body and then on the brain that even the, the regular regular soda. So stay away from that. Yeah, right. Stay away, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and if you actually do this, there could be, we talk about this, the health benefits and the, the way you feel, the way right. you look, how you feel, but it has financial implications for what's going to happen in your older age, right? right. If you're blessed to live do you want to be healthy and active or do you want to be, uh, you know, with chronic medical conditions, spending all your time going in and out of doctor's offices? And also financially, if you're not buying packaged processed food and orange juice and yeah. stuff, you know, it, it has short term and definitely long term yeah. financial benefits for you. But it's still a little it's expensive to, to actually eat healthy too. Oh, don't forget, it's still a, uh, we would have to concede it's still a little expensive to eat healthy food too. Fine. Correct. Unless you yeah. grow them in your garden or your backyard. Well, well, doctor, doctor, you make a you make a point there, right? But let's 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 know. We would like to frame it that it's not it's it's more expensive to to treat chronic disease than to yeah. eat well. So it's all about you, yeah. You just, yeah. What, what are you looking at today, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. All right, folks. T. Falanchi, you guys are the best. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. It's an absolute delight working on this, and I I hope that our viewers will take these things to heart. 
and really act on these things. But you have really treated this topic really, really well. So thank you so much. Thank of course, you. We're very passionate about this. <laughs> we are. <laughs> we, you know, and there are lots of yeah. topics. We like. We love to come back, talk about gut biome, um, talk about you know um, intermittent fasting. There's so many different things that we'd yeah. like to share with your audience. So you know, you know where to find us. You know, we know where to Absolutely. find you. So and give us the give us the website address again. What's the website address? Uh, www.tfalandchi.com. So tfalandchi.com. Yeah, one word, one yeah. One word. So awesome. drink more water, drink water, get active, and lots more vegetables and fruits, and make the starch the side. Rice cannot be your yeah. main domain anymore. Rice yeah. needs to be the side. That comes out once in a while, okay? <laughs> you, you people didn't talk about bread either, so no problem. When maybe next ah, time. Ah, that's another topic. Bread. Bread, bread topic. is like rice, and it's like, you know? Yes. All right. All right. Oh, yeah, okay. We can't talk about bread. <laughs> all right, folks. Great. It has been fun. Thank you for joining us. And remember to Thank check you. out our uh, old, old videos you. and, of course, the Palanchi website. And then be sure right. to join us next week. God bless. Yeah, Great. we enjoyed it too, as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Okay.